Dinosaurs, fun, fact and fantasy. The dinosaurs. You've seen them on TV, in films, and in comic books. But what were they really like? And where did they live? everything you ever wanted to know, we have to go right back in time, back over 150 million years. To the time this terrible fight first took place. As you can see, it's not a very pleasant time to be around. And this swampland isn't a very safe place to be. That's because the age of the dinosaurs happened a very long time ago. And although this scene actually took place here in England, it was a very different England to the one we know today. There were no towns and villages, and none of the fields and woodlands that we see today. It was a time long before the first men and women were on the earth. A time when this world was a very different place to the world we know. And it was covered with all kinds of extraordinary plants, and even more extraordinary animals. And when the dinosaurs were around, a map of the world would have looked like this. The countries Africa and India are both next to South America, and Britain and Europe far closer to North America than they are today. So although all of the countries were around then, they were in very different places. Since the age of the dinosaurs, the main land areas of the world, the continents, have gradually been drifting apart, and it has taken millions of years to do so. Today's world, of course, now looks like this. We live now in a period called the Quaternary, and it's lasted for about one million years. And although that seems a very long time to us, it's actually just a very short time in the total life history of the world. If we go back 10 million years, however, we find ourselves in a very different period. We find ourselves in the Tertiary Age. This was the time when most of the plants and animals that we know today were just about starting to develop. The Tertiary Age goes back as far as 65 million years ago. And further than that, we begin to enter another age, the Mesozoic Age, the age of the dinosaurs and their ancestors. During the Mesozoic Age, the age of the dinosaurs, the weather was rather warmer than it is today. 
As we have seen, the countries of the world were all much closer together, and so there was very little difference between the different seasons. As a result, all kinds of plant life could grow all the year round in very hot conditions to provide food and shelter for all kinds of weird and wonderful animals, including, of course, the dinosaurs. Just look at them. Did you ever see such wicked eyes? Oof. Did you ever see such fearsome teeth? Did you ever see such a terrible face? Well, uh, here, I beg your pardon? A crocodile? What are you doing here? What do you mean, what am I doing here? This is where I live. But you're not a dinosaur, you're a... you're, you're a crocodile. Well, well, all right, if you want to get technical, I'm not a real dinosaur. But me and all the other crocodiles in the world are descended from the same group of animals as the dinosaurs. Most of my ancestors were around during the age of the dinosaurs. In fact, <coughs> I remember my great 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 grandfather telling me that his great 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 grandmother said she could remember them quite clearly. So you know all about them? <laughs> Anything you want to know, I'm your man, or rather, I'm your croc. Because man didn't arrive on the scene until much later, as you know. Uh, Dill's the name, descended from chaps like this Teleosaurus. Ooh, those fearsome-looking set of teeth lurking down there on the riverbank. But this is amazing. Do you mean to tell me that all the crocodiles in the world are directly related to the dinosaurs? That's what I was trying to say. That my great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great... Oh, no, hang on. <clears throat> I'll tell you another way. About 250 a million years ago this great big gruesome creature began to grow and grow. It was called the Thecodontium. It made reptile history. Cause the fierce old Thecodontium began the dinosaur dynasty. Now there were all kinds of dinosaur, as you will shortly see. And related to the dinosaur is the crocodile. <laughs> Yes, you're right, that's me! Yes, you can tell by the shape of our muscles And you can tell by the snap of our jaw or You can tell by the way we go hunting at night And the way that we stun with our tail when we fight Oh, I could tell you so much more How I'm related to a dinosaur Related to a dinosaur Well, we lay eggs just like hens do <laughs> We live in rivers and swamps And we can run faster than the average man When we're out of the water and we're on the dry land Oh, I could tell you so much more How I'm related to a dinosaur so, crocodiles and dinosaurs are both descended from the same ancestor. As the song says, that fierce old Thecodontian. According to the reference book, there are something like 800 different kinds of dinosaur. How on earth can you remember them all? You see, whilst my side of the family was busy developing into crocodiles, the dinosaurs were all busy developing into different types. What on earth do you mean, Dill? I'm sorry. Well, I... Uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I can't tell you much more at the moment. Something's come up. And it looks very much like a Brachiosaurus to me. So who's that with it? That's a Thecodontosaurus. Let's hope neither of them saw us. Shh, shh, and pay attention. Because these two are the biggest and the smallest members of one of the different dinosaur groups I was telling you all about. They're the largest and the smallest of the plodding dinosaurs. Now these two, on the other hand, are the biggest and smallest of the bird-footed dinosaurs. The big ones are Shantungosaurus, and the little ones got an even longer name, Micropachycephalosaurus. They're just two out of scores of bird-footed dinosaurs. Micro means small, doesn't it, Dill? That's right, but you need a big breath to say it. <gasps> Get your head down. Here come the killer dinosaurs, and that could mean real trouble. The big one is the worst of the lot, the Tyrannosaurus. And the smallest is that chicken-sized little monster, the Comsognathus. Because most of the dinosaurs were vegetarians, they dined only on plants and leaves. But some really were meat-eating monsters that would kill anything that got in their way. 
Now, these two are much more friendly, uh, towards me at any rate. <laughs> They're the Stegosaurus and the little Struthiosaurus from the armoured dinosaur side of the family. They look quite well protected. Oh, yes. They could take care of themselves all right, even though they preferred quite a peaceful life. These two look familiar. And so they should be, because they were among the very last of the dinosaurs. Triceratops is the big one, and the little one in front of him is Microceratops. These were the last dinosaurs because they lived right at the very end of the Mesozoic Age, in the light green Cretaceous period, remember? So they were some of the dinosaurs that could have been wiped out at the end of the Dinosaur Age? I'm afraid so, but don't feel too sad. Remember that you've seen all the main dinosaurs from over 140 million years. Plodders, bird-footed, fighting, armoured and the Ceratopsians. The last dinosaurs all in the space of three minutes. And each one of these different groups could contain anything up to almost a hundred different dinosaurs. So what are we waiting for? The, the plodding dinosaurs. The first of my dinosaur dozen. They were never too quick off the mark. The dinosaur dozen. Plodders! Here are some most very strange dinosaur names Try to say them out loud and then say them again Diplodocus, Volcanodon and Plateosaurus Iguanodon, Deinonychus and Tyrannosaurus Triceratops, Ilophysis and Hypesilophodon With Taurosaurus, Stegosaurus, that's about enough of them Baby Camosaurus Thicodontosaurus Masospondylus Volcanodon Plateosaurus Riojosaurus, Cetiosaurus, Brachiosaurus, Apatosaurus, Mamankisaurus, Diplodocus, Supersaurus. Well, Dill, you know them all personally so much better than I do. Which of the dinosaurs is your favourite? Well, since you ask, I must admit, I've always had a bit of a soft spot for the plodders, the brontosaurs. They've always seemed to me to be exactly what a dinosaur should be. None of you rushing about, just slow and stately, plodding from one place to another. And for someone like me, who can barely reach more than three feet off the ground, just imagine the kind of view you'd get if you were a giant brontosaurus. Yes, that's the dinosaur I'd like to be. If I had been born a dinosaur I'd be the most gigantic size And almost as wide as a house I would be But I'd be quite gentle And live peacefully if I were a dinosaur rather than me If I had been born a dinosaur My neck would be extremely long so I could eat leaves from very high trees As well as small plants on the ground near my knees If I were a dinosaur rather than me well, as you can see, despite all my high-flying ideas, I've had to come down to Earth again. Mind you, it is a very special kind of Earth, because it was here, in this Sussex quarry, just an hour or so's journey from London, that the first dinosaur to be identified by man was found. That's because over a hundred million years ago, Back in the Mesozoic Age, the age of the dinosaurs, there were all kinds of crocodiles and dinosaurs living here where Britain is. That's right. 
dinosaurs were right here in England. Mind you, it all looks very different today, though. Just as it did when Dr and Mrs Mantell first came across the scene back in 1822. Dr Mantell had come to visit a patient of his just along the road. And as it was such a beautifully warm summer's day, his wife Mary had come along for a ride. Well, she didn't want to be bothered with looking over her husband's shoulder all the time, so off she went for a short walk. But barely had she begun than her attention was drawn to the middle of a pile of rubble being used to mend the road. For there, in the middle of a pile of rough sandstone, was the oddest looking stone she had ever seen. It was dark brown and shiny, with a smooth, polished surface. And as she looked at it more closely, she suddenly realised what it was. The dark brown stone she was holding was a giant tooth, and there were many more crushed together in the sandstone nearby. She rushed to tell her husband of her amazing find. There could be teeth. Where did you find them? Down the lane. Huh? And together, they traced the source of the mysterious giant teeth back to a local sandstone quarry. Now, although Dr. Mantell and his wife knew that what they had found were fossils, animal bones that had been in the ground so long that they had turned to stone, neither of them knew for certain the name of the animal the teeth had come from. This was hardly surprising, for ever since the 17th century, people have been finding strange bones and fossils in the soil and stones of the south of England. Some thought them to be the remains of a race of giants that once lived in the area. Others believed them to be all that was left of a mythological collection of devils, dragons and fairy tale monsters. Well, the Mantells knew a little more than that. They remembered barely a dozen years earlier a girl called Mary Anning, who lived in the Lyme Regis area of Dorset in southern England. She had found, amongst other fossils, the complete fossilised remains of a prehistoric fish lizard, the Ichthyosaurus. Dr. Mantell knew that like the Lias rock that Mary Anning had found her fossils in, the sandstone rocks surrounding the teeth were very old, going back almost 100 million years, he knew that the teeth must have come from the same period of prehistoric time. But how could a thing as solid as a tooth find its way into something as solid as a rock? The answer is that when the tooth first fell into the rock, the rock wasn't rock at all, but simply a layer of rather sandy mud lying at the bottom of a stream or a swamp. You can see exactly what happens if you pour plaster into a dish and then drop a chicken bone into it. The plaster gradually traps the chicken bone in the same way that the mud gradually settled around the dinosaur bones. Then as time went on, more layers of mud formed on top of the bone and it gradually became covered. Of course! The sandstone rock took millions of years to set properly. Our plaster mix, on the other hand, should be set solid in a very short time. Then, millions of years after the rock had been covered by more and more layers of new rock, certain parts were slowly weathered away by the wind and sea to expose the old bones. In this case, the process has only taken a few minutes. Now you can split open your rock, Dill, to find your original bone. <laughs> And that's exactly what Mary Anning and the Mantells had to do, to split open their fossil finds. Except that they were dealing with much harder rocks and stones. That's right. And there's another important difference too. You see, we know exactly what's inside our fossil, but Dr Mantell and the other early fossil hunters were not at all sure where the bones they had found had come from.
One sunny spring day in 1822 In the little Sussex town of Lewis When Dr Mantell's young lady wife Was out walking one day just enjoying her life What did she see? Here, there on the ground Something dark and shiny and brown It was the very first tooth of a dinosaur The very first tooth that was found Well time went by, more teeth and bones were found But nobody knew quite what they were there was much speculation as to what they could be Dr. Mantle and his wife said, oh, dearie me What have we taken out of the ground? Perhaps we should have left things alone Well, we've never seen anything like these before Just what do we make of these bones? Was it a great big dog? Was it a fierce old giant? Now, how will we ever know? Perhaps an elephant? No, that can't be right Maybe a fiery dragon that set things alight Well, we've racked our brains and we still don't know Perhaps we should have left things alone Oh, what is the answer? A prehistoric monster? Well, what do we make of these bones? Was it a great big dog? Was it a fierce old giant? Now, how will we ever know? No, 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 perhaps an elephant? No, that can't be right Maybe a fiery dragon that set things alight Well, we've racked our brains and we still don't know we should have left things alone Oh, what is the answer? A prehistoric monster Well, what do we make of these bones? So how's your fossil coming along then, Dill? Oh, I'll show you. There you are. You know, all the same though, Dill, most people would find it pretty hard to imagine what a complete chicken would look like if they only had a fossilised chicken bone to go on. Well, that's the problem Dr Mantell had. He'd found the teeth all right, but it wasn't until nine years later, in 1831, that he finally discovered a complete skeleton. Then he could see for the first time ever what kind of an animal the fossilised teeth had come from. And what it would have looked like back in the Mesozoic age. I hate to say this, Dill, but you know, Dr Mantell's strange fossilised creature has come out looking more than a little like you. <laughs> of course it does! That's why he called it an Iguanodon. After a fierce Iguana lizard that lived in South America. And don't meaning teeth. It wasn't until several years later that people first began to realise that the Iguanodon was just one of the prehistoric reptiles called the dinosaurs. The name dinosaur means terrible lizard. And by the time that the word dinosaur first came into common use, all kinds of people have been busy working out their own ideas of what the Iguanodon would have looked like in real life. This is a model specially made for the Crystal Palace grounds in London in 1854. He's completely the wrong shape. His colours are all wrong. And as for the spiky horn on his nose, well, even Dr Mantell got that wrong. This is where it really fits. The people of Maidstone in Kent, near where the Iguanodon was found, were so pleased with it that they decided to put old Iggy here into their town's coat of arms. Today, of course, we now know that the Iguanodon that Dr Mantell discovered was only one of a whole family of bird-footed dinosaurs, the second of our dinosaur dozens. Dinosaur dozen, bird-footed. Once again, those dinosaur names Try to say them out loud and then say them again Diplodocus, Volcanodon and Plateosaurus Iguanodon, Deinonychus and Tyrannosaurus Triceratops, Ilophysis and Hypsilophodon With Taurosaurus, Stegosaurus That's about enough of them Lesothosaurus Hypsilophodon Pachycephalosaurus Prosaurolophus Hadrosaurus Parxosaurus, Anatosaurus, Corythosaurus, Parosaurolophus, Lambiosaurus, Iguanodon, Shangtungosaurus. Dr. Mantell's Iguanodon. Did you spot him in the dinosaur dozen? He was just the first of the dinosaurs to be discovered in Victorian Britain. Very soon afterwards came other similar fossilised creatures and the Megalosaurus and Cetiosaurus quickly found themselves occupying pride of place in the museums. By now, people were using the word dinosaur to describe a whole collection of prehistoric animals 
that have been found all over the world. In 1877, coal miners in the Belgian town of Bernissa were opening up a new coal seam when they came across the remains of 31 iguanodon skeletons, 11 of them virtually complete. It's believed that a whole group of them stumbled into a deep ravine by mistake to remain there for over 100 million years. But it was in North America that dinosaur fever really took hold. Here are some of the numerous places they've been found. In Colorado, Wyoming, Utah and Montana, and Canada. Fossil hunters in the early days even had to fight off the Red Indians to collect dinosaur relics. And not just Indians, because at least two of the most dedicated of the American collectors, Edward Cope and Othniel Marsh, were so jealous of each other's discoveries that they actually fought gun battles between them over who could lay claim to the most bones. Luckily, there were plenty to be found, however. In fact, more than enough for both of them. They could be found just lying in the desert, large bones waiting to be picked up. One non-dinosaur collector built a shack out of the bones. By the time Cope and Marsh had ceased their fighting and feuding, no fewer than 136 new kinds of dinosaurs had been discovered and named. There's a dinosaur national monument in the state of Utah with a special walkway where visitors can see dinosaur bones trapped inside a cliff face. And the town nearby, just a mile or two across the Colorado border, also has a new name. Dinosaur, with street signs straight from our dinosaur dozens. Dinosaur remains have been found in almost every part of the world, and we may be sure that there are still many more waiting to be discovered. And although they vary tremendously in shape, size and weight, all the dinosaurs have one thing in common. Their names were difficult to spell? No, it was all to do with the way they walked, because all dinosaurs walked with erect leg movements. In other words, they were reptiles that were able to stand upright. Unlike some reptiles I could name. Here, 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 it's not my fault that my legs come out at the side. I can't help being a sprawler. Of course it's not your fault, Dill. I'm sure you're perfectly at home swimming along in a swamp. Look, see? We crocs can stand up when we're running. That's right, but you can't stand up properly, not like a dinosaur. Well, that's what my song was all about, wasn't it? If I uh, had yes, a uh, <coughs> I shouldn't worry about it too much, you know, Dill. <laughs> After all, if you were a dinosaur, you'd be extinct by now. I know that. But remember that I am related to the dinosaurs. After all, I was born from an egg. You're right, Dill. It's now known that the dinosaurs were hatched from eggs in specially prepared nesting sites that were looked after by their parents. Quite recently, a whole nesting site of hadrosaurs has been found in America, and big nests of perfect eggs found in Mongolia in Asia. It's funny to think that a great big dinosaur like a Diplodocus could have come out of such a tiny egg. That's right, Dill. But the eggs couldn't have been much bigger, because a bigger egg would need a much tougher shell. And if the shell becomes too tough and thick, the baby dinosaur inside couldn't peck its way out. A better croc could. Of course, Dill. Today we believe that half a dozen to a dozen was about as many eggs as most dinosaurs would lay at any one time. Here is a typical clutch, a completely fossilised protoceratops nest. Just imagine half a dozen little dinosaurs all hollering for attention. And dinosaurs could shout, I can tell you. Mm, wouldn't have been much fun keeping one as a pet, would it? A sweet Diplodocus, <laughs> but not Tyrannosaurus, I think. What if he escaped into the streets of London? He wouldn't have been much of a pet. Among the total of over 800 dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus was probably the most frightening and certainly one of the tallest animals ever to walk on the Earth. Here's one of his relatives fighting Triceratops in the 1925 film The Lost World. The only good thing about him is the fact that this sort of film got it wrong, because he could only walk quite slowly, and so he wasn't much of a hunter at all. In fact, he spent most of his days feeding off the kills made by others. Unlike this scene, where a Tyrannosaurus is shown eating a deer, which wasn't even around then. Do you know what dinosaurs did all day? Well, my great 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 grandfather remembers his great 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 grandmother telling him what dinosaurs did. They just sort of plodded around going nowhere, or just sat still for long periods of time, like we crocs do in swamps or on rocks. Sounds rather boring. Not at all. It refreshes the brain which many of the dinosaurs hadn't got much of. I know, like Diplodocus and that practically brainless clot Stegosaurus. They all had very small brains. Not all. Some of the dinosaurs had quite well-developed brains when compared with the weight of their bodies. They were quite intelligent. In fact, some of them were almost as bright as you modern crocodiles, Dill. Oh, 
Oh, thank you. What's more, they'd also develop very good eyes for night hunting, as well as fierce teeth and claws. So they weren't all pea brains like the plodders and the armored dinosaurs? Quite the opposite. There were the hunters and killers. They had the skills to chase and kill almost anything that moved, from reptiles and dinosaurs to some of the ancestors of mammals that human beings are descended from. the next dinosaur dozens coming up. Oh, uh, the killer dinosaurs. Dinosaur dozen. The killers. Now here they are once again, those dinosaur names. Try to say them out loud and then say them again. Diplodocus, Vulcanodon and Plantiosaurus, Iguanodon, Deinonychus and Tyrannosaurus. Triceratops, Ilophysis, and Hypsilophodon with Taurosaurus, Stegosaurus, that's about enough of them. <gasps> Comsognathus. Procomsognathus. Coelophysis. Coelurus. Deinonychus. Domiseomimus. Gallimimus. Megalosaurus. Dilophosaurus. Allosaurus. Spinosaurus, Tyrannosaurus. You know, they quite give me the shivers, even after 65 million years. But at least we've something to be grateful to them for. What's that? Leaving so many fossils around for us to find. After all, all the dinosaurs we know today were walking around on the Earth at one time. And when they were killed or died of old age or an accident, like those iguanodons in Belgium, they left us all kinds of valuable clues to the ways in which they lived. How did it happen? Well, as we've seen, so many of the dinosaurs lived in swamp and marsh country. And when they died, their bodies would slowly sink down to the bottom of the swamp. Then, as the flesh and muscle all rotted away to nothing, the layers of mud and silt surrounding it gradually dried out to turn into soft layers of stone, just like the chicken bone that we buried in plaster mix. Was it a great big dog? Was it a fierce old giant? Now, how will we ever know? No, 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 perhaps an elephant. Maybe a fiery dragon that set things alight. Well, we've racked our brains and we still don't know. Perhaps we should have left things alone. Oh, what is the answer? A prehistoric monster. Well, what do we make of these bones? Eventually, after many millions of years, the combined pressure of the earth and rock on top slowly began to change the skeleton of the fallen dinosaur into a kind of stone, generally keeping its dinosaur shape. That's how the fossil iguanodon of Dr. Mantell met his fate. Trapped for millions of years in a swamp floor that turned to stone and was finally found in the layers of sandstone in the quarry. That's right, Dill. <laughs> Just like this Coelophysis. And that's not all. Now, obviously, the bones that fell to the bottom of the swamp first will be found far lower down in the stone layers than the bones of the dinosaurs that died later. And those dinosaurs that lived and died during the final period of dinosaur life on Earth, the Cretaceous period, will be found on top of all of them. Right at the bottom, my old ancestor, the fierce old Thecodontian. And as we go back up through the layers, all the various dinosaur groups gradually come to light. Just as the paleontologists discovered them. The lowest layer, the Triassic. Middle to late Triassic, Coelophysis, Procomsognathus, Ornithosuchus, Platyosaurus and Thecodontosaurus, Jurassic, mind the gates please, thank you, Comsognathus, Megalosaurus, Allosaurus, oh hello, Mamankiosaurus, Diplodocus, Brachiosaurus, Stegosaurus and Supersaurus, Cretaceous, Deinonychus, Hype, Silophodon, Iguanodon, Shantungosaurus, Stegosaurus, Psittacosaurus, Protoceratops, Microceratops, Tri... Oh, Ceratops. Achoo! Oh, Ankylosaurus. Oh, t -t 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 Tyrannosaurus and Strothiosaurus. Oh, 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 what a lot of saurus. The Cretaceous was the last part of the dinosaur or the Mesozoic Age, and there were then more different dinosaurs around than ever before. Mind you, by the time we get to the next floor, the Tertiary Age, you'll notice quite a few changes. Tertiary and Cainozoic. Mammals, lizards, crocodiles, saber-toothed tigers and mammoths. No dinosaurs? Sorry, Dill, not one. Oh. 
And by the time we reach our own age, the Quaternary, human beings have arrived and all that remains of the world of dinosaurs are the huge collections of bones and fossilised skeletons that have been found all over the world in the rocks of that period. And nobody knows for sure just how or why the dinosaurs all died out. Well, I've heard one or two theories. This dinosaur right then, fellow was... Uh, but before you tell us all your theories about how the dinosaurs died away, let's see our fourth dinosaur dozen. These are the Ceratopsian dinosaurs, some of the very last dinosaurs on Earth. Now here they are once again, those dinosaur names. Try to say them out loud and then say them again. Diplodocus, Vulcanodon and Platyosaurus, Iguanodon, Deinonychus and Tyrannosaurus, Triceratops, Ilophysis and Hypsilophodon with Taurosaurus, Stegosaurus, that's about enough of them. <gasps> Microceratops, Psittacosaurus, Protoceratops, Chasmosaurus, Arhinoceratops, Anchiceratops, Pentaceratops, Styracosaurus, Pachyrhinosaurus, Monoclonius, Torosaurus, Triceratops. Well, you've certainly given us plenty to think about, Dill. Yes. I'm not too sure about the men from Mars or the Noah's Ark. I think the meteor theory the most likely, though it didn't kill us crocs. At any rate, the dinosaurs disappeared entirely at around the end of the Cretaceous period and were never seen again. But there are still plenty of dinosaur near relatives around today. Apart from you and your crocodile chums, I suppose. Well, that's right. And it's not just crocodiles, you know. All kinds of animals are related to the original Thecodontium. You've only got to remember Dr. Mantell's Iguanodon, the lizards. Dinosaur means terrible lizard. That's right. Now just take a look at the lizard. It may be cold-blooded, but there's dinosaur blood in its veins somewhere. And snakes still? Oh, yes. Despite their strange way of getting around, they too are descended from the same group of reptilian ancestors as the dinosaurs. Just the same as turtles and tortoises. Is that the full extent of your dinosaur relatives then, Dill? Well, perhaps, but not quite. Just listen to this. Dinosaurs! But that's a cockatoo, Dill. Exactly. 
and there's an amazing connection between birds and dinosaurs. Ah. Oh. Beak, eggs, claws, erect leg stands. That's right. And although some of the resemblances are only coincidental, no one really believes the parrot to be descended from the parrot-billed dinosaur. Mind you, there are still a lot of experts who believe that birds could be the largest surviving branch of the dinosaur dynasty. Anyway, because Archaeopteryx here had feathers, wings and a beak, it has been rightly called the first bird, but the Archaeopteryx should be compared with this little chap. The Coelurosaur. And when this was done, they found at least 21 common factors of shape and structure, including the fact that the Coelurosaur was almost exactly the size of a chicken. So birds really could be related to dinosaurs? It's more than a theory. It's a distinct possibility. But what about the other flying reptiles, like the Pteranodons? Aren't they flying dinosaurs? Far from it. The Pteranodons were never real dinosaurs. They didn't have the legs for it. No, they were strictly pterosaurs. Flying reptiles, not dinosaurs. Lots of people do get it wrong thinking that the pterosaurs were dinosaurs. Yes, and just look at all the other animals that people sometimes mistake for dinosaurs too. You may think we're dinosaurs, oh, but we're not. Though we may have some features that the dinosaurs got. We've prettier faces, we have much nicer teeth. No, we're certainly not dinosaurs underneath. No, we're certainly not dinosaurs underneath. The old Loch Ness Monster and Fierce Dragons too have all been called dinosaurs, but that isn't true. We crocodiles may well have the same ancestry. But he's no dinosaur. Oh no, I'm very much me. No, he's no dinosaur. No, I'm very much me. Crocodile tears, I beam crocodile smiles. We're much better looking and we're here to stay. No, you won't find a dinosaur around us today. No, you won't find a dinosaur around us today. Oh, you may think we're dinosaurs, oh, but we're not. Well, we may have some features that the dinosaurs got. We pretty the faces, we have much nicer teeth. And now we're certainly not dinosaurs underneath. And now we're certainly not dinosaurs underneath. Well, so much for the things that definitely aren't dinosaurs. And who knows what other weird monsters are waiting to be discovered. Maybe some are still around today. Well, there have been some fairly amazing discoveries concerning prehistoric animals and plants that people had always assumed to be extinct for millions of years. So, perhaps there could still be the odd dinosaur waiting to be discovered. Perhaps even the famous monster at the bottom of Loch Ness. Yes, the Loch Ness monster has certainly kept people baffled for a long time. He must have been pretty well protected to have lasted for the past 65 million years, though. Talking of protection, my last dinosaur dozen were really well protected. Oh, watch out. Here come the armoured dinosaurs. Dinosaur dozen, the armoured ones. Now here they are, the final time, those dinosaur names. Try to say them out loud and then say them again. Diplodocus, Vulcanodon, and Platyosaurus, Iguanodon, Deinonychus, and Tyrannosaurus, Triceratops, Ilophysis, and Hypsilophodon, with Taurosaurus, Stegosaurus, that's about enough of them. <gasps> Struthiosaurus, Scalidosaurus, Acanthophilus, Polycanthus, Sylvisaurus, Tuojangosaurus, Haleoskinkus, Kentrosaurus, Scolosaurus, Ankylosaurus, Nodosaurus, Stegosaurus. There they go, the last of the dinosaur dozens. Well, you certainly know a bit about dinosaurs, Dill. Well, of course. My great, 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 great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Let's have a quiz show and see if anybody knows as much as me. It's the Dino Quiz. And here's our crocodilian host, here's Dill. Thank you, thank you. Oh, you're too kind. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And welcome to the Dino Quiz, the ever-popular quiz show for dinosaurs that are anything but extinct. <laughs> <laughs> Behave you rather. Now, well, you've seen all the dinosaur dozens and followed the dinosaur history, so let's see how your knowledge shapes up as we introduce our panel of experts. On my left... Representing the Jurassic Age is Diplodocus. Diplodocus, Dill, if you don't mind. After all, I am one of the plodders, you know. Oh, <laughs> and next to her, we welcome back a very old friend of the show, and I do mean old, Lesothosaurus from the Triassic. I am related to the Iguanodon, and am one of the first dinosaurs to Thank have... Thank you, Les, we know oh. all that. And on his right, of course, it's the familiar face of our Cretaceous expert, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Hello. And yet another new bone tie, if I'm not mistaken. I can't think where he gets all his bones from. It's not where he gets them from, it's who he gets them from I'm worried about. <laughs> and finally, our non-dinosaur guest of the week, a medieval dragon, all the way from Wales. Oh, thank you, kind sir. Well, you all know what the show is about, so let's now see our first clip. So there we are. Well, can you identify the larger dinosaur in that clip? Tyrannosaurus rex, Cretaceous. It wasn't a dinosaur. Can you tell me why? It was really a lizard covered in scales and also it couldn't stand upright. Probably had too many in the dino bar. <laughs> A good start, Rex. That's two points to you. Now for a trickier one. I want you to watch very carefully as we see our next clip. Well, now, what's so special about this bird? Lesothosaurus, late Triassic. Bit after my timeness, but I think it's not really a bird, but a feather duster. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Dragon mythology. It laid golden eggs? Always thinking in fantasy terms, you. Wrong. Tyrannosaurus rex, Cretaceous. Well, uh, I may be wrong, Dill, but it looks like the Archaeopteryx thing to me, the bird that everyone reckons could be directly related to us dinosaurs. Well, that's right. Another two points to you, Rex, putting you well and truly in the lead. But there's still plenty of time to catch up. So for our next question, whose coat of arms is this? And for a further two points, who can identify the dinosaur in it? Diplodocus, Jurassic. That's the official coat of arms of the town of Maidstone in Kent, I think, Dill. Correct for two points. And the dinosaur? Sorry. Lesothosaurus, Triassic. Well, it's obvious. It's one of my family, the Iguanodon, and he evolved from the same branch as I did through the lesser Lesothosaurus. Well, it may be obvious to you. Well, well I, I do know a bit about Iguanodon. Well, I don't think you do. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, that's right anyway. And the Iguanodon makes two points each for Diplodocus and Lesothosaurus. Putting you both two points behind Rex with the Welsh dragon still trying to break his duck. This scene belongs to which dinosaur period? Uh, 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 no conferring. Jurassic? Uh, Triassic. Cretaceous. Present day, boyo. Well done, dragon. Two points for you. Houses weren't invented until the present day. Here's what I believe to be a very easy one. I'm going to show you a clip of the Loch Ness Monster, and I want you to identify the class of animal to which it belongs. Ready? Tyrannosaurus rex, Cretaceous. Plesiosaurus. You won't be pleased when you hear this. Wrong! Dragon mythology. The same as me, surely, which is mythology. That's make-believe. I can believe that. Yes, that's right, at least until it's proved otherwise. So how does the score look at the end of that round? Tyrannosaurus Rex and Dragon are in the lead with four points, and the other two with two points. Which is the odd one out? Lesothosaurus Triassic. The pterosaur, uh, because it flies. Sorry, so does the Archaeopteryx. Tyrannosaurus Cretaceous. The uh, Megalosaurus, because it munched up other animals. So did we crocodiles. Wrong. Dragon mythology. The crocodile, because all crocodiles are such clever dicks. No need to be rude. Any idea, Dip? Oh, sorry. I just dozed off. Like a dormouse. The dormouse! Correct! Because it's a mammal. Well done, Dip. Two points to you. What did I say? 
With three of you on four points, the last question. Take a look at these. What are they? Oh, they're models of monsters. Uh, toys. Silly bits of rubber. Well, they certainly aren't clever dick dinosaurs. Well done, Dragon, for being most correct. That's six points to you. So, from Rex... Tenor. Dip. Bye. Les. Bye-bye. And this week's special guest and our winner, the mythological Welsh dragon, Cheerio. May I wish you all a very good evening and remember to tell all your friends that you saw us. <laughs> that quiz was more about non-dinosaurs than dinosaurs, Dill. Well, if you want to know more about real dinosaurs, there are lots of things that you may care to explore in the world of dinosaurs. That's right, Dill. Look at all this lot. Dino puzzles. Kits. Dino toys. Dino models. And a dino club that you can join. And of course, there are lots of museums where you can see our old friends Diplodocus. Diplodocus. Aha. Diplodocus. Triceratops. Iguanodon. Megalosaurus. Their bones and footprints, though you won't usually be allowed to walk on them. And models of what they really look like. There are some dino parks you can visit to see dinosaur statues. You could always go looking for fossils like Mary Anning did, or in quarries like the Mantells. So, that's the lot. Lots of places to find dinosaurs. And I'll see you there as well, because we crocs are all Always around. Bye bye.